15 years since maybe 1998, say 11 years. But 11 years compared to two or three years. Terminal server is a very mature technology in the context of this conversation. We as an industry know how to do it. There are 80 million terminal server users in the world. Eight zero 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 zero. There's a lot of users, a lot of administrators, a lot of people, forums, conferences, reference architectures. There's a lot of stuff out there. And of course, notice these are the words of our proper terminal server user. This is the proper way to do things. Terminal server is not this crazy new fad thing that's going to disappear. So these are these advantages we have for terminal server. Now, the terminal server people are going to list disadvantages. If you take a terminal server person, how many people here are terminal server, you hate BDI? It, it, it's, it's okay. Don't turn, turn, turn the camera towards the side for a second. Just point, point the camera right over there. Okay, raise your hand. How many people hate BDI? You're not on camera now. Okay. So, so a terminal server person who does not like BDI is going to say, um, disk space? All these hard drives of all these computers, if I'm pulling them into my data center, now I'm paying expensive SAN disk space. Now, yes, different products, like we talked about, uh, VMware's View Composer with Lynch clones, Citrix Dynamic Provisioning Services, EMC and NetApp deduplication. There are things to reduce that down. But we're talking about the, from the view of terminal server, uh, um, a fan of terminal server, server, these are disadvantages that they see in the BDI world. How about these management nightmares? If I have BDI, that means I'm all running all these desktop operating systems. So now I have to deal with Patch Tuesday, and I have to deal with um, antivirus, and all these kinds of things that people don't really deal with as much in terminal server environments. It's interesting because, again, you're still patching terminal servers, but you're patching one server for 50 users instead of all these individual users. Again, we'll, we'll talk about that. Remember, this is, this is not necessarily what I'm saying are disadvantages of BDI. This is what the terminal server people think. These are why BDI is crazy. And that's what the bottom line is here. With BDI, you spend a lot of money to have the same problems. People like to say that BDI, you spend lots and lots and lots of money buying licenses and servers for all the users and storage to get the worst of both worlds. Because you, now you cannot use it offline, you cannot use it with your graphically intense applications, and you still have antiviruses, and your users are still breaking things, and you still have disk storage. So all that money you pay for two times the problems. Now, um, in, in the economy we have today, if there's worries in your company that maybe there's going to be some reduction in redundancies of employees, eh, maybe spending money to double your problems is not necessarily a bad thing. But... This is the view. So this is the terminal server view of BDI. So now let's look to BDI. Yay for BDI. Yay for BDI. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> that was more than, than uh, terminal server there. So yeah, yay for BDI, right? So, so the young hipsters who love BDI, what reasons do they give for loving BDI? Well, there's some interesting things. Again. The real reasons, let me go back one. The real reasons why we love BDI, management, access, performance, security, right? But we're not counting that because that you all have to go to terminal server. So we're talking about the specific advantages of BDI over terminal server environment. So the first one is this live migration of virtual machines. Now this is not maybe a, a, a big thing necessarily, but the fact that every single user session is its own consolidated virtual machine, I can move that around. And that allows me for maybe for higher availability, maybe for flexibility in load balancing, the VM suspend resume. You might make an argument there's better resource usage because the user can disconnect from their VM, and in terminal server, the user disconnects and the session's still running on the server. And it runs if, if we want to make the session not run on the server, we have to uh, to just log the user off and it's gone. Here we can actually even suspend or resume it. And so maybe they disconnect, it puts it, the, does a disk, uh, pardon me, the memory, um, you know, suspend, creates a hibernation file, puts that on the stand, then it can stay there for a few days, the user connects back again, picks up right where they left off. I'm not saying that's something we have to do, but it's an option. And because each user has their own self-contained virtual machine, we do get some interesting advantages with the technology. 
Falling also into that, each user having their own virtual machine, you could make an argument that we have better load balancing. Because we can integrate with things like vMotion, so now you can look at all the different ESX hosts you have, and if one of them gets very busy, we can put users on a different machine. Now, of course, terminal server, yes, we can do that when the user's connecting, but what if the user's connecting and the machine's not busy, and then five users on the same server start using the same intense applications? Well, that could be interesting for us. That could be an interesting problem for us. So now if we can just live migrate and move users around, it's an interesting advantage. I think you would all agree this is interesting things. Um, all users can be administrators. And one of the problems with terminal server, how many people that work in terminal server spend all these hours spending hours and hours figuring out how to make applications work for non-administrators? Because we can't make our users administrators because they break everything for, for everyone else. Hey, no more. All of our users can be administrators because the virtual machine is our security boundary. And if they break it, they only break it for them. Another thing is with application compatibility. Now, finally, all these terminal server application compatibility problems go away. So it's still server-based computing, but no more problems with application compatibility. And then the, the final advantage of VDI, actual competition among our vendors. Citrix in the terminal server space was an absolute monopoly. And they behaved like a monopoly. The, the Citrix product basically did not change in 10 years. The only people they were competing against was people doing it the old way. Whereas within the VDI space, we have Citrix, we have VMware, we have now Microsoft entering this, we have Symantec, we have LeoStream, we have Quest, we have Ericom, we have probably other companies who will email me tomorrow and tell me that I didn't mention them. A lot of competition. And what does competition do? Way cheaper, price-wise. Lots of features. Citrix announced um, Zen Desktop 2 and Zen Desktop 3 within a year from each other. VMware released VDM2 and, and View 3 in about a year. So the competition among vendors means there's a lot more innovation, a lot more aggressive pricing in VDI. So there's a lot of interesting advantages, very specific advantages of VDI that we don't have with terminal server. So the, so the VDI people say, that look at these great advantages. And look at these problems with terminal server that aren't there. Do you like these advantages? Do you agree with this? Yes, everyone. I know someone who does not agree. He says, wait, wait, wait. Son. Let me tell you. I'll give you VM migration. I'll give you VM suspended demo. I'll even give you load balancing. Of course, I'll agree about competition. All users can be admins. No, 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 no. Uh, and Ben says, nein, das, not, das ist nicht richtig. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, uh, um, das ist scheiße. <laughs> he says, he says, all users cannot run as admins. I mean, yes, it's technically possible, but if you want the real job security for yourself, make your users admins on their boxes. <laughs> and your work will never end. Uh, something like there's a guy named Rick Mack. He works for Quest Software out of Australia. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant guy. Um, he, he, he says that uh, uh, something like 97%, I don't remember the exact number, high 90% of Microsoft security-related hotfixes are only vulnerabilities if you log in with admin rights. If you log in with user rights, no problem. And in general, allowing users to run as admins is crazy. Now, what we find is a lot of VDI people think, okay, it's easier to let our admins run as users than it is to try to do the work and figure out the real, the real solution for them not to run. But this is something that, that if your users run as local admins, good luck, that's crazy. So we don't want to say that as an advantage of the uh, original server. Um, other, than, other than that, I think we're okay, except non-TS compatible apps can run. Where was it? Someone over here, when I was saying that, would whisper to the friend, I think that's not right. This is also what Benny would say. Non-terminal server compatible apps would run. Now, this is interesting, right? Because everyone knows there's problems with application compatibility in terminal server, right? This is true. Uh, but the, what's interesting is these problems, these applications that do not work on terminal server, 